So we're kind of reached the end of chapter three here. Um, and I just wanted to take a minute to kind of review everything we've done so far throughout the year. Uh, essentially, what we've done at this point, now that we did our last lesson on square roots, we have talked about every possible number that exists. Um, we've talked about whole numbers in chapter one and how to solve algebra with that. We talked about uh, integers in chapter two. That's all the whole numbers and their opposites. Um, so like the whole numbers would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to positive infinity. And then integers would be all the opposites of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, so on and so forth. Um, we talked about in chapter 3 all the rational numbers. And remember for rational numbers, you've got a definition up here if you want to highlight it. Rational numbers, uh, numbers that can be written as fractions. Um, so basically, anything, uh, anything that can be written, any whole number can be written as a fraction. You take three, I can do three over one. I can be written as a fraction. So um, we've basically studied everything on the number line. We also studied uh, yesterday, whether you realize it or not, we studied a, a new kind of number called irrational numbers. An irrational number basically is anything that can only be written as a decimal that does not terminate or repeat. Uh, terminate means uh, ends. So like 2.4 is a rational number because it's a decimal that ends. Uh, whereas if you look at examples like um, pi or any square root of a non-perfect square, that's why I said we have discussed this whether you realize it or not. Yesterday we talked about, or the last lesson we talked about estimating square roots. Um, when, you, when you estimate a square root, remember I said that those answers we came up with were estimates. They weren't exact because uh, really the answer is, is this this uh, decimal that goes on and on forever, doesn't repeat, there's no pattern, there's no rhyme or reason. If you think about what irrational behavior is uh, in, in real life, irrational behavior is behavior that doesn't make sense. It just doesn't, it doesn't, uh, doesn't work. So when we take those numbers and combine them with the rational numbers, we have what we call all of the real numbers, all the numbers that are on the number line. Uh, and so that's where we've gotten so far, numbers that are either rational or irrational. And here's how that kind of plays out. You see this big box right here. The purple box is all of the real numbers. And inside that purple box, we kind of break this down. So think of the big box as kind of like, uh, I'm sorry about that. Think about the big box as kind of being like the United States. Well, inside the United States, we have all these, uh, all these different states, right? So the rational numbers, if you kind of think about that, that's more a specific type of real number. So that would be like Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is a state inside the United States. All your other states would be your irrational numbers, okay? So think about a very specific set of numbers. And there's also a lot of numbers that are irrational. Anything that's like the square root of 26, the square root of 84. Those are all uh, numbers that do not... Uh, terminate, they don't end, they don't repeat, there's no pattern there. If you take that a little bit more specifically, within rational numbers, we either have integers or we have something that's a decimal or a fraction uh, that isn't an integer. So an integer, remember, is all the whole numbers, we've got that in here, but also includes their opposites. So basically anything that doesn't have a, uh, it doesn't have like 0.2 or something attached to it, um, it could be a decimal if I do like 3.0, but really that's just three. Um, that's an integer. Whereas the decimal or fraction, if it's something like two thirds or five halves, or um, if it's like, uh, I'm trying to think of an example, like 2.46, that would be a decimal. And, and you know that. Um, so that's kind of the difference between integers. Uh, integers can be decimals. They can be fractions. But uh, decimals and fractions don't have to be integers. Um, and, and same thing with integers. Integers don't have to be whole numbers. Uh, numbers that are negative are integers. Whole numbers are all positive. Um, that's what we talked about in Chapter 1. So that's kind of how it all breaks down, our classification of numbers. That's what we're talking about here today. How do I classify numbers? And we're going to kind of get into that a little bit uh, in a little bit. There's also another set of numbers. And uh, this is kind of interesting. It's the first time we'll kind of talk about this. Um, these are what we call, if there are real numbers, there are numbers that are not real. The actual name for them, they're the imaginary numbers. 
Um, and that seems kind of silly, but there's that's the actual uh, mathematical name for these. So not real numbers. I got a couple examples down here. Now think about, I want you to take a second and think about these. Um, first of all, think about this 5 divided by 0 or this 8 divided by 7 minus 7. Well, notice here, these are fractions with 0 in the denominator. That means I'm dividing by 0. And, and you've heard your teachers, your math teachers in the past say, uh, there's no division by 0. You can't divide by 0 which sort of is correct. Like if I have $5 and I say, okay, I'm going to give those $5 to zero people, that's not possible because even if you keep the $5, you're still putting it with one person, right? I can't divide something uh, amongst zero other things. So division by zero in that sense is not possible, but uh, we do look at division by zero a lot in calculus. Um, so it's not, it doesn't, it, the universe doesn't blow up when we divide by zero, as some of your teachers might have said in the past. It is possible, but you have to use uh, some calculus to do it. So, uh, obviously, more on that when you get a little older. Um, but that's an example of a number that is not real. If you see a zero in the denominator or something that would make a zero, that's an example of not real numbers. Uh, the other one here, think about why you would have trouble with this. I want you to think about what would be the square root of negative 16? Is there a number I could multiply by itself to give me negative 16? Well, you might say, well, sure, negative 4. Well, negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16, so that doesn't work. Well, and then you say, well, what about, well, obviously 4 times 4 doesn't work because that's also positive 16. And then you say, well, what about negative 4 and 4? Negative 4 times 4, yeah, that equals negative 16. But are those the same numbers? No. Negative 4 is 8, a difference of 8 from positive 4. Uh, and if you don't believe that, then and let me ask you, would you rather have $4 or owe me $4? Um, and if, if you don't get that, then you're not allowed to be my accountant. Um, but that's, that's just an example to show you that, that you can't take the square root of a negative number. Uh, we kind of talked about that before. So here's your definition for not real numbers. Make sure you copy this down. Any number that includes division by zero, so there's kind of two things to this here. If I divide by zero or if I take the square root of a negative number. Those are kind of the two ways that I get not real numbers. Let's take a look at a couple examples of how we do this. Uh, first type of problem we're going to talk about is uh, writing all the names that apply here. What are all the names that apply if I do the square root of 5? Well, take a look back at your, at your little uh, diagram here. What we're going to do is we're going to work our way backwards. We're going to start by saying, okay, is this real or not real? Okay, so let's take a look here. I'm not taking the square root of a negative number. I'm not dividing by 0. So this is a real number. Let me change my color. So this is real. Okay, all right, next. Is it rational or irrational? Is it in Pennsylvania or is it a, a different state? Okay, so is, is the square root of 5? Here's the test for that. Remember, rational, irrational numbers, uh, I gave you an example here, any square root of a non-perfect square or pi. Um, there's other constants here that are irrational, but pi is the one you know. Is 5 a perfect square? No, it's not, so it's irrational. So I've got those two. Now the question is, can I put any other names? Well, look, if I have irrational numbers, there are no, irrational numbers are not integers. They're not whole numbers. So if you write irrational, we can't write anything else. We're done with that one. Okay? All right, let's take a look at this one. Negative 12.75. Is it real? Oh, you betcha. I'm not dividing by zero. I'm not taking the square root of I'm not taking the square root of negative 12.75. If I were, that would be not real. So it's real. Is it rational? Well, I'm not taking the square root of this. It's definitely not a perfect square, but since I'm not taking the square root of it, I'm okay. This is rational. Next, is it an integer? Notice we're kind of we're inside Pennsylvania, so now we're kind of deciding: Are we in Allegheny County? Um, there are other there are other counties inside inside Pennsylvania, so we're kind of kind of going deeper here. Um, this is not an integer. Because notice, it's not the opposite of a whole number. Uh, so this is just going to be called a decimal, which is exactly what it, what it is. So, and that's all the further we can go. 
We can't say we can't say rational number. We can't say any of that stuff. Or we, we can't say rational. We can't say integer. We can't say whole number. We can't say zero. So we're done. All right. Letter C. Letter C uh, might be a little bit confusing, but if you kind of figure out what this equals, the square root of 16 is 4. So really, what I have here is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So yeah, I'm classifying the square root of 16 divided by 2, but I'm also uh, classifying 2. So here we go. Uh, first of all, is it real? Well, yes. I'm not taking the square root of negative 16. I'm taking the square root of 16. So this is real. Is it rational? Yep, 16 is a perfect square, so I'm good there. Also not dividing by 0, so that's another reason I know it's real. Is it an integer? So I've got real, I've got rational. Is it an integer? Yes, it is, because it's 2. So I've got, and remember, it's, it's not just the square root of 16 divided by 2. When I work this out, it actually equals 2. So this is an integer. Uh, the next question, is it a whole number? Well, 2 is not negative, so yes, this is a whole number. Oops, let me widen this out here. There we go. OK. And lastly, uh, can I call this a decimal or a fraction? Yes, yes, I could. I could call it that because 2 can be written as a decimal or a fraction. So while it doesn't have a decimal point on it, I'm going to go ahead and write that because it does apply. All right? So that's one thing I'm going to ask you to do. Classify these. Give all the names that apply. The other thing I'm going to ask you to do is state if the number, this is a little bit easier, just tell me if it's rational, irrational, or not real. Well, square root of 15, if we look here, square root of 15, it's not a perfect square, it's not negative, so I know it's real, because I'm not taking the square root of a negative, uh, so this is an irrational number, because it's not a perfect square. So I just write irrational, and I'm done. 0 divided by 3, be careful. This is not 3 divided by 0, OK? It's not 3 divided by 0. I'm not dividing by 0, so this actually equals, if I take $0 and split it amongst three people, everybody gets $0. So this is a real number, and it's rational, because 0 is a rational number. All right, on the other hand, take a look at C. I'm taking the square root of a negative number. If I take the square root of a negative, I, there's no number you can give me that if I multiply by itself will give me negative 9. This is not real. And then on the last one, last one I just throw this in here. Be careful, because you might look at this and say, oh, that's, that's irrational. That's not a perfect square. But remember, uh, you, had, you had some problems like this. If I take the square root of 4 ninths, it's the same thing as taking the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. So this actually equals square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. This actually equals 2 thirds. And 2 thirds is a rational number. Remember the definition of a rational number? Can it be written as a fraction? Well, yeah, I'd say 2 thirds can definitely be written as a fraction. All right, so you have uh, underneath here, you have a little uh, 15 question assessment that's going to ask you to do this first. Just tell me which check the box. Is it rational, irrational, or a real number? Then there's going to be one that says check all the names that apply that apply to this number. So you've got to get 100% on that, and then your study guide will open up. Good luck.